streets, our streets, whose 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 streets, our streets, You got mace? Yeah. By who? By Tommy. I'm trying to figure out what's going on now. It's too late, bro. Y'all just be ready for tomorrow. Y'all couldn't help a couple people that was out here tonight. Just be ready tomorrow at least.
Who, who drove how long to get here? 12 hours from our car. We've been driving from uh, north of the border, so. Oh, you came down from Kanadistan. If I was doing the radical agenda in Canada, I'd probably be arrested for it, right? Yeah, well, in sure. Canada, yeah, hurting right. people's feelings is basically illegal. I mean, yeah. it's not really criminal, but uh, you unless, unless, get, like, unless they're white males. So when did you get into, as you said, the racial stuff? When uh, Trayvon Martin case happened, you know, Michael Brown and, and Tamir Rice and all these different things happened, every single case, it's some little black asshole behaving like a savage, and he gets himself in trouble, shockingly enough. Whatever, whatever, whatever problems I might have uh, with uh, my fellow white people, uh, they, they generally are not inclined to such behavior, and, you know, you got to kind of take that into consideration when you're, when you're thinking about how to organize your society. In Oklahoma City. Okay, so exactly. You have to go back to Oklahoma City to talk about a white act of terrorism, Elliot Roger, right? Roger, Dylan, Roof. Okay, so, so now you've managed to name three people, and I'm pretty sure Elliot Roger wasn't explicitly white, by the way. But the thing is, you remember the names of white bombers and mass shooters, okay? Yeah. Can you tell me the name of all 19 hijackers on 9-11 off the top of your head? You can remember Dylan Roof's name. You we can were remember Tim McVeigh's name. White people were capable of violence. I didn't say capable. Of course we're capable. I'm carrying a pistol. I go to the gym all the time. I'm trying to make myself more capable of violence. I'm I'm here to spread ideas, talk in the hopes that somebody more capable uh, will, will come along and do that. Somebody like Donald Trump. So we just saw some rival chants. These are some of the alt-right groups lined up. They're supposedly here to protest the removal of a statue of Robert E. Lee. But they're really here to show that they're more than an internet meme, that they're a big, real presence that can organize in physical space. The alt-right is very organized. They have a lot of numbers, they have shields, they have protective gear like helmets. We've seen tear gas, water bottles, eggs thrown. Nothing like pepper spray on this budget. We're doing everything that we're supposed to do, trying to, to express opinions. And the criminals are over there getting their way. And that, that, is a, that is a foundational problem with our society. And whatever you think of my opinions, that's going to be something that puts you in danger. Yeah, and that is because this city is run by Jewish communists and that's criminal niggers. That's exactly what it is. So and you're that's the true, true, by You're the, the true nonviolent protesters. I'm not even saying we're nonviolent. I'm saying that we're fucking we did, right we did not aggress. We did not initiate force against anybody. We're That's not right. nonviolent. We'll fucking kill these people if we have to. Fuck everybody in! All right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, let's get on. Let's go. Do we need more people in here? We've got vice in here. Is this the fucking media right here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, vice. Fucking vice jumped in the fucking van. Open the door. Let him out. If we gotta kick the media out, we do. Why don't you tell me what you think? Huh? Who, what do you do for the Daily Stormer? I am a feature writer. I do the Crypto Report, and uh, I'm generally their man on the ground at events. So uh, what do you hope to get out of today? Like, what, why, what does it mean to you? 
Well, for one thing, it means that we're showing to this parasitic class of anti-white vermin that this is our country. This country was built by our forefathers. It's sustained by us. It's going to remain our country. I believe, as you can see, we are stepping off the internet in a big way. Uh, for instance, last night at the Torch Walk, there were hundreds and hundreds of us. People realize they're not atomized individuals. They're part of a larger whole because we have been spreading our memes. We have been organizing on the internet. And so now they're coming out. And now, as you can see today, we greatly outnumbered the uh, anti-white, anti-American filth. And at some point, we will have enough power that we will clear them from the streets forever. That which is degenerate in white countries will be removed. So you're saying showing up in physical space help lets people know that like there are more like them. We're, we're starting to slowly unveil a little bit of our power level. You ain't seen nothing yet. A state of emergency has been declared, so they shut down the protest in Emancipation Park. They moved to this park, McIntyre Park. But we don't know if it's going to happen. We don't know if the police will allow them to continue. I need to speak to the police captain immediately. Right now we have guys, right now we have people on the ground at the statue with equipment. And they're being told they're not allowed to have a vehicle come through and pick them up or anybody come and pick them up. I'm about to send at least 200 people with guns to go get them out if you guys do not get our people out. Thank you. Tell them to call me. They have my number. We had a back. federal court order right, that was determined. Okay. Federal, we had a federal court Say order to, your ex -husband. to have this to have this rally. And also we had a uh, order that we could have obviously speaking equipment like all group. Well, we get in the car. Excuse let's get ready. Right, we're going. We had speaking permits. Say hello. We had, to your they, they wouldn't even right. let us hook up our, our microphones and our speakers because they, they don't want our speech because we're telling the truth. We're talking this is not our about the ethnic cleansing of America and the destruction of the American way of life and a new Bolshevik style society with no freedom, no freedom of speech in this country. That's really where we're going in America and that's got to change. on the ground being treated by the medics. Um, there were people running up the street screaming and crying. There's many people on the side um, injured too. Uh, it's a really horrific sound. hit us just now. There are people, bodies laying on the ground right now. We told city council we did not want them here. They let them come. We told the police we did not want them here. They let them come. I had to jump out of the way. I almost got hit by the car my fucking self. I seen bodies flying from getting hit by that car. I see people in blood on the fucking ground. This is my town. We did not want the motherfuckers here. And now we got bodies on the ground and they're trying to respond to somebody right now.
Yeah. I was on the opposite side of the intersection and I saw people and signs and everything go flying up in the air. I saw the car go backwards up the street, so I know it was a hit and run. And I uh, ran up because they were screaming, medic, medic, medic. There was a guy laying on the side and there was a woman uh, laying there, hardly breathing, and uh, we ended up rolling her over and she died. And was, I helped do CPR on her. So, yeah. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. And so uh, take a few moments to feel the feelings you've got. And if you're a praying person, say a prayer. And if you're not, then connect to a collective unconscious that we all share and that we all feel together for the person who lost their life. I have a great grandfather who literally has told me the same stories of what I've experienced today. And the fact that I can look at what's going on and see what my grandfather was talking about, it's not scary, but it's appalling. Um, and the fact that we have a president that can come on national TV and go from talking about uh, people were wrong on many sides and not even acknowledge a young baby who lost her life and result of the people who he has notably and, and knowingly incited um, is appalling to me. But honestly, I can't say that I'm, a, I'm surprised. We need you guys at every meeting that's for equality and, and togetherness and unity. We need everybody to make Charlottesville a real place of resistance. All the chaos that you've seen today has been brewing for quite some time, and I don't think it's ever been about a statue. I think it's been about right is right and wrong is wrong, and that so many people stand for the wrong things happening, and, and not many of us have came out until it's too late. Did you see the president's comments when he said that both sides shouldn't be violent? I thought it was a bunch of nonsense. You know, he stood in one of his rallies when he was running, before he was elected and said, if they would have did that 40 years ago, they'd have left out on the stretcher. You okayed this activity. This is the face of supremacy. This is what we deal with every day, being African-American. And this has always been the reality of Charlottesville. You can't stand in one corner in this city and not look at the master sitting on top of Monticello. He looks down on us. He's been looking down on this city for God knows how long. This, this is Charlottesville. democracy when we are not able to have civil liberties like the First Amendment. That's what leads to rational discussion and ideas breaking down and people resorting to violence. Indict for murder now! Indict for murder now! Indict for murder!
All right, so I came pretty well prepared for this thing today. Keltec P3AT, 380 ACP, Glock 19, nine millimeter. Ruger LC9, also nine millimeter. And, uh, oh, and there's a knife. Well, I actually have another AK in that bag over there. Um, you get lose track of your fucking guns, huh? I'd say it was worth it. We knew that we were gonna meet a lot of resistance. Uh, the fact that nobody on our side died, I, I'd go ahead and call that uh, points for us. The fact that none of our people killed anybody unjustly, I think is a plus for us. Um, and I think that we showed, uh, we showed our rivals that we won't be cowed. But the car that struck a protester, that's un unprovoked. That's not true, and you know that it's not true. You've seen the video. So. I've seen a video. I, yeah. I don't know much about it. Oh, I, I, the, I understand that you you're... Can describe what the video well, appears uh, to show? Okay, so the video appears to show someone striking that vehicle when these animals attacked him again, and he saw no way to get away from them except to hit the gas. Uh, and sadly, because our rivals are a bunch of stupid animals who don't pay attention, uh, they couldn't just get out of the way of his car, and some, and some people got hurt, and that's unfortunate. So you think it was justified? I think it was more than justified. I, I, I can't believe, the amount of restraint that our people showed out there, I think was astounding. What do you think this means for the next alt-right protest? I say it's gonna be really tough to top, but we're up to the challenge. Wait, why? Why? Tough to top? I mean, someone died. I, I think that a lot more people are gonna die before we're done here, frankly. Why? Why, because people die every day. Right? I mean, do you- but not do, like of a heart attack, I mean violent death. Well, people die violent deaths all the time, right? Like this is part of the reason that we want an ethno state, right? So like the, the blacks are killing each other in staggering numbers from coast to coast. We don't really want to have a part of that anymore. And so the fact that they resist us when we say, hey, we want a homeland is not shocking to me, all right? These, these people want violence and the right is just meeting market demand. Even though The Tonight Show isn't a political show, it's my responsibility to stand up against intolerance and extremism as a human being. What happened over the weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia was just disgusting. I was watching the news like everyone else and you're seeing like Nazi flags and torches and white supremacists and I was sick to my stomach. My daughters are in the next room playing and I'm thinking, how can I explain to them that there's so much hatred in this world? They're two years old and four years old. They don't know what hate is. And it is difficult to express how heartbreaking it is to see something like this happening in our country. But here's one thing that's not difficult to express. Nazis are bad. The KKK, I'm not a fan. Because there weren't many sides. The protesters were shouting Nazi slogans. They were carrying Nazi flags, one of them killed a young woman and injured dozens of other people with his car. There were two sides, not many sides, and one of those sides had Nazis on it. And it's not like Trump is a shrinking violet. He's known for criticizing things. If only the president was as mad about neo-Nazis murdering people in the streets as he's been about Hillary Clinton, the New York Times, CNN, Joe Scarborough, Kristen Stewart, the cast of Hamilton, Diet Coke, Nordstrom's not selling his daughter's clothes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, me, the state of New Hampshire, Gold Star Families, Penn Jillette's Las Vegas show, the movie Django Unchained, Meryl Streep. <laughs> And Lady Ghostbusters. Now, there should be no doubt about who these people were or what they believed in. They told us in their own words and actions with Confederate flags, Nazi flags, Nazi slogans, and Nazi salutes. You know, in a presidency that has essentially just been an uninterrupted series of low moments, this weekend was the lowest yet. We shouldn't have to shame or pressure the President of the United States into saying that Nazis are bad. Mr. President, you didn't have to rise to the level of FDR or JFK. All you had to do was show the same courage and moral clarity as the people who make tiki torches, <laughs> and you fail. It's important for everyone, especially white people in this country, to speak out against this. Ignoring it is just as bad as supporting it. 
And remember, there are people who have given their lives to make sure this kind of hate doesn't spread. They fought and died on the right side of history. One brave woman in Charlottesville, Heather Heyer, died standing up for what's right at the age of 32. I can't look at my beautiful, growing, curious daughters and say nothing when this kind of thing has happened. We all need to stand against what is wrong, acknowledge that racism exists, and stand up for what is right and civil and kind. And to show the next generation that we haven't forgotten how hard people have fought for human rights. We cannot do this. We can't go backward. We can't go backward. A memorial service for the woman killed in that car attack in Charlottesville over the weekend is scheduled to start in about 30 minutes. Heather Heyer was killed when a car plowed through a crowd of protesters on Saturday. Friends and family remember her as a strong woman who spoke out against inequality and urged others to be active in their communities. And Barbara joins us now live from Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay, Ellison, that service starts about an, an hour or so. Um, what's the turnout been so far? Well, people started to line up outside of the theater at about 9 a.m., two hours before the ceremony is supposed to begin. And the line went all the way down this area where I'm standing now. They call it the mall. They just started letting people go in about 20 minutes ago, and most people have made it inside. Many of the people here are wearing purple. That's because it's Heather's favorite color, and that's something her parents asked people to do when they came to this memorial today. Heather Heyer grew up in this area, and she lived and worked here as an adult in the city. And today, this city will begin to try and say goodbye to her. Heyer decided to protest the white supremacist rally with a few friends, and they say she was not part of an official group and was walking across the street when a white supremacist rammed his car into Heyer and dozens of other counter protesters. She was a great soul. She was a sweet, sweet soul. She always spoke with conviction, stood up for what she believed in. She liked to make you laugh. She, she's just a warm soul and she, she believed in equality and she, she didn't want hate. Our Fox News alert, we take you to Charlottesville, Virginia. This is the mother of the victim of Saturday's violence, Heather Heyer. But I had to go to Facebook to find pictures of my child because we were always together. I saw her a couple times a month at least, and we would text each other fairly often, and we would Facebook message at bedtime, I love you, I love you, you doing okay? Yep, I love you. So I have no regrets on that part. Take pictures of the ones that you love because you don't know when they're not going to be there. But here's what I want to say to you today. This could be a storm in a teacup, and it could all be for nothing. This could have, I could have said, Let, let's don't do this publicly. Let's have a small private funeral. But, you know, that's not who Heather was. Anybody who knew Heather said, yep, this is the way she had to go, big and large. Had to have the world involved because that's my child. She's just that way. Always has been and she will continue to be. Because here's the message. Although Heather was a caring and compassionate person, so are a lot of you. A lot of you go that extra mile. And I think the reason that what happened to Heather has struck a chord is because we know that what she did is achievable. We don't all have to die. We don't all have to sacrifice our lives. They tried to kill my child to shut her up. Well, guess what? You just magnified her. Here's what I want to happen. You ask me, what can I do? So many caring people. Pages of pages of pages of stuff I'm going through. I'm reading pages of pages of pages how she's touching the world. I want this to spread. I don't want this to die. This is just the beginning of Heather's legacy. This is not the end of Heather's legacy. You need to find in your heart that small spark of accountability. What is there that I can do to make the world a better place? What injustice do I see 
and want to turn away. I don't, I don't really want to get involved in that. I don't want to speak up. They'll be annoyed with me. My boss might think less of me. I don't care. You poke that finger at yourself like Heather would have done, and you make it happen. You take that extra step. You find a way to make a difference in the world. My child had a high school education. My child was no saint. She was hard to raise because everything was a negotiation. <laughs> not, not kidding, but <laughs> you know what? She was a firm believer in whatever she believed. And let's do that. Let's find that spark of conviction. Let's find in ourselves that action. Let's spread this. Let's have the uncomfortable dialogue. It ain't easy sitting down and saying, well, why are you upset? It ain't easy sitting down and going, yeah, well, I think this way, and I don't agree with you, but I'm going to respectfully listen to what you have to say. We're not going to sit around and shake hands and go kumbaya, and, and I'm sorry, it's not all about forgiveness. I know that that's not a popular trend. But the truth is, we are going to have our differences. We are going to be angry with each other. But let's channel that anger not into hate not into violence, not into fear, but let's channel that difference, that anger, into righteous action. Right now, down the road, there's a blood drive going on in Heather's name. Right now, there are people who are here willing to listen to one another and talk to one another. Last night in New England, they had a peaceful rally in Heather's name to have some difficult dialogues. If you ever want to see what one of those dialogues look like, look at her Facebook posts. I'm telling you, they were rough sometimes, but they were dialogues, and the conversations have to happen. That's the only way we're going to carry Heather's spark through. So remember in your heart, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention, and I want you to pay attention Find what's wrong. Don't ignore it. Don't look the other way. You make a point to look at it and say to yourself, what can I do to make a difference? And that's how you're going to make my child's death worthwhile. I'd rather have my child, but by golly, if I've got to give her up, we're going to make it count.